Now let's discuss vapor pressure, boiling points, and intramolecular forces. At this time, please turn to Table H. Table H shows the pressure the gas acts on a liquid with, which is called vapor pressure, at a specific temperature, which is shown on the x-axis. So the parts of the graph on Table H are as follows. The x value down here represents the temperature or boiling point in degrees Celsius of each of these four substances. And the y value here represents the vapor pressure of that substance in kilopascals or kPa. Okay? Two things I want you to know on table H are as follows. First, you have what's called normal boiling point. The normal boiling point is the um, boiling point or temperature, which is the x value, at a standard pressure or y value of 101.3 kPa. This, re this is represented by this dotted line right here. That's standard pressure, 101.3 kPa or 1 atm. If you forgot that these two quantities represented uh, standard pressure, please look back on table A. But basically, the boiling point, which is the x value at standard pressure, which is a y value of 101.3 kPa or 1 atm represented by this dotted line, will represent the normal boiling point. For example, at standard pressure, which is a y value of 101.3 kPa, for the curve of water, the x value, if you look down here, is 100. Therefore, the normal boiling point of water would be 100 degrees Celsius. Okay? Another example might be ethanol. If you look at um, ethanol at standard pressure, which is a y value of 101.3 kPa, its boiling point or x value, if you trace it down to the graph, is approximately 80 degrees Celsius. So that's the normal boiling point of ethanol. Okay, so basically at a y value of 101.3 kPa, which is standard pressure, this dotted line right here, the x value on each of these curves represents the normal boiling point. Now, when we're comparing intramolecular forces on this graph, we have to keep in mind the following. Whichever um, substance has a higher boiling point at a specific pressure will have the strongest intramolecular forces as we already know, correct? So at 101.3 kPa, for example, ethanoic acid having the highest boiling point would obviously have the strongest IMFs. Conversely, if you're comparing the different substances at the same temperature, let's say 100, or let's say actually uh, 50 degrees Celsius, the lowest vapor pressure at a specific temperature will represent the strongest IMFs. So for example, at 75 degrees Celsius, the substance with the lowest vapor pressure at 75 degrees Celsius will have the strongest IMFs. Since ethanol acid has the lowest vapor pressure, it has the strongest intramolecular forces. Okay? So remember that when you have a higher boiling point or a lower vapor pressure, you will have stronger intramolecular forces. And also remember in this graph on table H that at standard pressure or a y value of 101.3 kPa, which is represented by this dotted line, the x value or the boiling point will represent what's called the normal boiling point. Okay? So now let's go through these problems. Sample problem five. As the pressure on a liquid increases, what happens to the boiling point? So basically, if what's asking is as the y value, which is vapor pressure, increases, what happens to the boiling point or the x value? So if you look at the vapor pressure, as the y value goes up, so too does the x value, because as it goes up in y value, it increases from left to right in temperature. So what you should say is, as the vapor pressure or y value increases, the boiling point or x value increases for all the liquids shown on table H. In B, it says, what is the vapor pressure of ethanoic acid at 90 degrees Celsius? So here we're given the temperature, which is 90 degrees Celsius, the x value. So we need to find the y value, which is the vapor pressure for ethanoic acid. So for ethanoic acid at a um, temperature of, or x value of 90 degrees Celsius, we have to find the y value on the curve. So the y value on the curve right here, if we look for an x value of 90 degrees Celsius, we'll see that it's approximately 40 kPa. Because at x equals 90, the y value is 40 kPa. Okay? And see if the pressure on the surface of ethanoic acid in the liquid state is 50 kPa, at what temperature will it boil? 
So for ethanoic acid, we have the Y value or vapor pressure of 50 kPa, and we have to find out the boiling point, which is its X value. So for ethanoic acid, we have to find out for a Y value of 50 kPa here, what is its X value? So we had to trace over the y value 50 kPa to the curve for um, ethanoic acid, and we had to trace it down to the x-axis to see approximately what its boiling point is. If we trace it down to the x-axis at a y value 50 kPa, we'll see that its boiling point is approximately 95 degrees Celsius because it's right here. Okay, so there you go. So now let's extend this further. Um, like I said before, the normal boiling point is the boiling point at a Y value of 101.3 kPa, eight, uh, which is also known as standard pressure. Okay. Also remember, like I said before, higher boiling point and lower vapor pressure means stronger IMFs. So it says in sample problem 6A, in a closed system at 60 degrees Celsius, a liquid has a vapor pressure of 20 kPa. Find the liquid's normal boiling point. We don't know what this liquid is, so let's find out what it is. We know that at x equals 60 degrees Celsius for the temperature or boiling point, the y value or vapor pressure is 20 kPa. So let's first identify what this liquid is before finding its normal boiling point at 101.3 kPa. So at 60 degrees Celsius, we have to find out right here at x equals 60 degrees Celsius for temperature, which um, liquid has a vapor pressure of 20 kPa. If we trace it up here, we go 10, 20. At x equals 60 for temperature and y equals 20 for vapor pressure, we'll see that, that this matches up to water. So this substance is water. Now we have to find water's normal boiling point. So to find water's normal boiling point, we have to find um, its x value or temperature at a y value of 101.3 kPa, which is standard pressure. So at a y value of 101.3 kPa, which is its standard pressure, the x value on the curve of water will represent its normal boiling point. So if we trace it over for y value of 101.3 kPa to the curve for water, we can trace it down to its x value to find its normal boiling point, which is its x value. Its x value is 100 degrees Celsius. So therefore, we know that water's normal boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. Okay? B says, what is the vapor pressure of ethanol at its normal boiling point? This is a trick question because let's remember normal boiling point is at standard pressure. Since we know standard pressure is 101.3 kPa, the vapor pressure of any substance, including ethanol, at its normal boiling point would be 101.3 kPa or 1 atm. C says compare the vapor pressure and intramolecular forces of ethanol and water at 80 degrees Celsius. So let's take this one step at a time. Let's first compare the vapor pressures of ethanol and water at 80 degrees Celsius. So at 80 degrees Celsius, x equals 80 degrees Celsius rather, if we trace it up, we'll see that water has a lower vapor pressure because its y value is lower, while ethanol's vapor pressure is higher because its y value is higher. So if you compare the vapor pressures of ethanol and water, water has a lower vapor pressure at 80 degrees Celsius than ethanol does because its Y value is lower than ethanol's is, okay? Now, if we compare the intramolecular forces, let's remember that um, either higher boiling point or lower vapor pressure will result in stronger IMS, correct? So if we look at that, we got to find out at a temperature of 80, which one has a lower vapor pressure to find out which one has stronger IMFs based on our roll up here to get stronger intramolecular forces. So if we look, when comparing the vapor pressures at 80 degrees Celsius, water has a lower vapor pressure. Since water has a lower vapor pressure, water will have stronger intramolecular forces as a result. Because lower vapor pressure, as we know, results in higher or stronger intramolecular forces. Okay? So in D, it says, which substance has the strongest IMFs at 75 degrees Celsius? Since we're comparing everything at the same temperature, we have to find out which one has the lowest vapor pressure. Which of these four has the lowest vapor pressure at 75 degrees Celsius? If we look, the one that has the lowest vapor pressure is the one that's hit first when we trace it up, right? Since ethanoic acid has the lowest Y value tracing up from X equals 75 degrees Celsius, 
Ethanolic acid will have a stronger intramolecular force than the rust do because lower vapor pressure and higher boiling point according to our rules means stronger intramolecular forces. Okay? Now in E it says which substance on table H has the strongest intramolecular forces at 101.3 kPa? So if we look at 101.3 kPa, we're tracing it over for a y value, and all we can compare here, since the y value is the same, are the x values. Since x values represent temperature, based on our rule up here, we know that a higher boiling point will lead to stronger intramolecular forces. We cannot compare vapor pressure because it's 101.3 kPa for all of them. So whichever has a higher boiling point at 101.3 kPa has the stronger intramolecular forces. Okay. So if we trace it over, the one with the higher boiling point or x value at 101.3 kPa will have the strongest intramolecular forces. The one with the highest x value or boiling point at 101.3 kPa is ethanoic acid since it's furthest to the right. Since ethanoic acid has the highest boiling point or x value at 101.3 kPa, it will have the strongest IMFs. There's your answer. Okay? So remember from this slide how to use table H. The x value is the boiling point, the y value is the vapor pressure. But the more important things to know here are normal boiling point and how to compare IMFs. Normal boiling point is the x value or boiling point at standard pressure, which is a y value of 101.3 kPa, which is this dotted line right here. Okay? So whatever the x value is for a y value of 101.3 kPa will represent normal boiling point. Also remember that when you're comparing intramolecular forces, a higher boiling point or lower vapor pressure on table H will equal stronger intramolecular forces.